Hi, my name is Polly Higgins. I'm an international environmental lawyer and I specialise on planetary rights. Some people know me as a wild lawyer. One year ago I took into the United Nations the idea of a universal declaration of planetary rights. I'm now here at Copenhagen and Bolivia is now talking about taking that very declaration into the United Nations next year. They have a talk later this evening, which I'm going to, to see what rights those will be. I think there are six rights that we can put into international legislation to protect the planet. And they are the right to diversity, the right to ecological integrity, and that gives the freedom of the natural cycles of life, the right to not be polluted, the right to restorative justice, and that gives the freedom of a clean and healthy environment. Those rights apply equally to you, to me, to the soils, and to the sea, to the trees, and even the honeybee. And the honeybees are in fact very important because at the moment we're looking at severe global colony collapse disorder. If we lose the bees, we lose 70% of our foodstuffs overnight. Of course, the right not to be polluted is maybe our starting point. Because one of the biggest problems we're facing just now is an excess of greenhouse gas emissions. Greenhouse gas emissions themselves we need, but it's the excess that's creating imbalance and creating damage. If we had the right to not be polluted, then we could take direct action against those entities who are creating that pollution in the first place. And we could say, okay, now it is illegal to create that pollution, and now we need to stop it. We can also stop those who are damaging the planet, and we can put in place the right to restorative justice. A very good example of that is when, if we look at the Amazon, we have a situation there where over the last 10 years we have more and more environmental legislation that is put in after the event and is compromised legislation and is based on pecuniary justice. So for instance, if you have an illegal logger, logging corporation going in there, they factor in as an externality that if caught, they will have to pay up a fine, say once in a hundred times. The person buying the furniture in their garden store actually pays a little, little extra to cover that fine. That sends out a message that it is business as usual and if caught one can just pay up. Our whole Western world is premised on that form of pecuniary justice. We now need to put in place a wider form of justice, a restorative justice. And what that would mean is that actually taking that corporation to task and saying not only do you need to replace the trees that you have raised and undertake a massive replanting program, but you have to look at the soils and the soil depletion that's taken place by the, the monocropping that has then been subcontracted out, the soils that have then had water downwash into the waterways that created pollution into those waterways and poisoned the fish. If that all stems from that one corporation's action, then all of that needs addressing, as well as the communities who were forcibly evicted and displaced from that land for the illegal logging to take place in the first instance. It would be about true justice, it would be about restoring, this restoration on a grand scale. Restoration actually has a secondary benefit because it also addresses natural carbon sinks. We need to put in place huge, enormous restorative justice programs. My vision for our new world is a world where we make a paradigm shift. We move from a world... My view for a world, a new world, is one where we move from that position where we view the planet as an inert thing. When we see the planet as an inert thing, what we do is we impose a value on it, we commoditize it. And therefore what we do there is we enslave the planet. That is what we're doing at the moment. My new vision is that we move to a paradigm where we recognize the planet as a living being, where we recognize its intrinsic value, and therefore we take responsibility for the planet. And that means recognizing what our duties and obligations are to ourselves as individuals, 
also our communities, but also to the wider Earth community.